Hi guys! Welcome to Living Traditions Homestead. My name is Sarah and today I have a fun project that I'm going to do and I'm going to bring you along. We are going to be making something really fun for the chickens. Fun, fun and healthy for them for this winter. Uh, but first, I want to introduce you to our chickens. So these are our chickens and our roosters. We have three roosters right now, uh, but actually I think one is out uh, looking around. He's not supposed to be out, but he's the smallest. He's a bantam and he can get out easier than everybody else. We don't talk about our chickens very much on YouTube. We haven't shared them with you, but we uh, keep three types of hens right now. We keep golden laced Wyandotte hens and barred rock hens. We have a few of the white leggern hens as well. Now overall we chose the golden laced Wyandotte and the barred rock because they forage really well. They are nice. Uh, they're dual purpose so they can be meat chickens or egg layers and they will go broody and raise their own young. Uh, so that's the reason why we have those two hens and those are really the types of hens that we've always wanted on our homestead here. However, when we first moved here, we wanted chickens right away. And we knew that buying chicks or hatching some eggs, um, we would it would be you know six months before we would have eggs. It was a real challenge for us to find some really good quality young hens uh, in our area when we first moved here. We had a terrible experience um, buying some, what we found out later were really old hens from the farmer's market. So we were able to find a family who is also homesteading nearby us um, and they had decided to sell some of their white leggings and they were young. Um, I think we bought, we must have bought four hens and a rooster. We still have four hens. Um, and uh, so we wanted eggs right away. They did a great job at laying. And you know, two and a half, almost three years later, they are still, uh, laying like a champ. So even though white leggerants aren't necessarily uh, the breed uh, that we prefer to have all of the time, they're doing a great job. They're older and they're still laying. Sometimes they're out laying our other, our other hens. So Anna, who is the lady we bought them from, she's actually now a subscriber to our YouTube channel. Thank you for these wonderful hens. Um, the rooster didn't fare so well. He actually was taken by a raccoon last summer. Um, all of our roosters were, to be honest. So we do have three roosters now that are barnyard mix from another friend of ours who raises the most beautiful uh, chickens. It is definitely starting to get cold this winter and I thought that we would do a fun project for them that will keep them healthy over the winter. Um, we're going to make some suet blocks for them um, out of some of the rendered fat that I've kept over the years here on the homestead um, and just some some uh, chicken scratch. So let's go explore the freezer, uh, see what kind of rendered animal fat we have in there that we can use and get going on a really fun treat for these guys. I don't save a lot of our fat anymore when I'm cooking uh, because we raise all of our own meat now and they're all so lean, I just don't collect a whole lot anymore. Um, so in the freezer I have some old fat and so I'm looking for a hard fat, not, um, not a soft fat. Chicken fat is generally soft and it uh, gets kind of melty in, um, in kind of warmer weather. So I'm looking for beef fat and goat fat uh, to use in our um, concoction today. I guess it's been a long time since I've collected beef fat. Golly, 2014. We'll take that. And some goat fat. And some hamburger fat. That'll be a good start. Next up we need a bucket of scratch. Uh, 
That should be plenty. Okay, let's go in the house and get started. I'm super excited to see if the chickens are gonna love the treat that we're gonna fix for them. And I know that it will really help them keep warm and healthy over the winter. I'm gonna start off by creating a double boiler and to put this frozen fat in just a saucepan on the stove until it can start to melt. The whole point right now is to melt all of that fat until it's a liquid so we can pour it into a bowl and mix everything up. And I should probably take those plastic lids off. So why on earth would you go through all the trouble to make these little fatty, seedy treats for your chickens? Besides the fact that they're fun and the chickens will totally love them. Uh, well, it's winter time and the chickens' bodies are really working hard to keep warm and a lot of times they're also coming off of a fall molt. So the added energy from the fat uh, is very good for them. If you're using a scratch, most likely there is some cracked corn in there. Cracked corn and corn in general helps the chickens uh, create body heat, which is great in the winter. Not so great in the summer, especially you, if you live in Phoenix like we used to, uh, but cracked corn is fantastic for your chickens in the winter. Um, now besides scratch, which is the only thing I'm using today, there are lots of other things that you could put into this formula, this snack for your chickens that would be fantastic for them. Um, mealworms, dried mealworms would be fantastic. Any kinds of seeds, uh, grains, nuts, um, dried fruits would be good for them, chopped up and mixed in there. Um, all of these things are going to provide various vitamins, various nutrients for them to help them get through the winter. Also in the winter, there just isn't as much outside for the chickens to eat that they normally eat throughout the spring, summer, and fall. A lot of the leaves, the grass, the dandelion leaves, all those kinds of things, the bugs, the worms, they're all gone in the winter time. So that's a big source of nutrition and protein that is just not available for them in the winter. So adding these nice treats to their diet and giving them something to do um, is just a really awesome thing for them. So give it a try. I'm sure your chickens would love you for it. How come you're outside of the chicken run area? You know you're small and at risk for getting eaten by something much larger than you. Okay, the fats are ready and I can take them out of the pan. Look at how full this jar of fat is. What on earth was I thinking when I filled it this full? Uh, but I will carefully take it out of the pot I'm just going to put these on a towel because there's a lot of water um, on the bottom of these and just to keep things uh, kind of clean and neat and tidy. This really is a very simple process and recipe. Essentially I'm going to start putting some of the scratch in this bowl and then I'm going to mix in some fat, mix it all up until everything is covered. Now I have no idea how much this is going to end up being. We'll just have to play it by ear and see. I am just going to dump some of this scratch right in this bowl. And I'm going to start with some of this fat. Now I took the labels off so I have no idea what kind of fat this is. I think this might be hamburger fat. And with my spatula, I'm just going to stir it in. Now there's no magic formula to how much fat you use um, with you know, how much seed or scratch or whatever you're using, uh, it'll all get eaten. That's looking pretty good. Let's do more. I do want to use up this fat, so let's do even more. And goes the rest. Do you think the kids would notice if I told them these were granola bars? Hey, that looks pretty good. 
I think we're done. We've used all the scratch and all of the fat. Now we need to pour it into a container. Our mixture is already starting to solidify, so I need to hurry up a little bit. Now I'm gonna use some cake pans to spread this out on, and I'm just gonna pat it down firmly. Another fun idea would be to use a muffin tin pan and just put them in each little, you know, muffin hole. Uh, but I have so much, I've made so much, I don't have that many muffin tins. So I'm just gonna use cake pans. I'm just gonna use a glass cake pan and a special John Deere cake pan. Uh, I think that's the most amazing thing on the planet. I have no idea where I got this, but hey, it's John Deere, it's gotta be awesome. So basically I'm just gonna split this up between these two and then pat, pat it down. Now you could use a spatula to do this, but doesn't it just seem more fun to just put a glove on and press it down with your hands? <laughs> there, all done. So now we just need to wait for these to solidify. We can just leave them on the counter for them to solidify or we could stick them in the fridge, we could stick them in the freezer. Uh, so that's what I'm gonna do. I think I'm gonna stick them in the fridge and hopefully they'll be solid enough for us to cut these into squares and go out and give one to the chickens to see how they like it before it gets dark. Okay, I've got one out. Let's go see if they like them. Oh no, most of them are already roosting. We need to call them. Here they come. I guess it's only these guys coming. Let's see what they think. I think they like it. Ooh, they like it so much they're gonna fight over it. Well, I call that success. That was so fun, so exciting. You guys need to try it too. Your chickens will love you. You guys, thanks so much for stopping by today while we did a fun little project for the chickens. You should really try it too. If you enjoyed this video and are enjoying our channel, right now is the perfect time to hit the subscribe button below. Don't forget to check us out on social media, including Instagram. And until next time, thanks so much for stopping by the homestead. Take care and God bless.